In this lesson, let's bring up our guy again. And that's 285 underscore 2945174.jpg. He needs a name, doesn't he? Not a number. He looks like a Fred. I'm going to call him Fred. What we want to do is look at one more sharpening filter before we get into some really fun stuff. And let's go up to the word filter on the pull down menu and start, of course, with convert for smart filters. Let's go to the word filter and go down to sharpen and look at unsharp mask. This bad boy's been there for a long time, years and years and years. And it actually is very similar to a technique that we use in a dark room with film. We've got amount, radius, and threshold. Each one of those control the image. So let's do this. Let's bring him down a bit up here. Now we don't really have a large preview here, do we? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use my shortcut keys. That's the control key in Windows, the command key in a Mac, and the plus and minus to make him bigger. And I'm going to move him over a little bit like that. This time, I think we will use the preview over here so we can see it, because we just really don't have a lot going for us up here. Amount, what is it? Amount is how aggressively are you going to allow me to attack that edge and make it look sharper. Radius. How many pixels do I get to use on either side? And threshold, this is where we can actually control what it does. How much of a shift in brightness or color constitutes something I can lock onto and I can sharpen? A threshold of zero means just about everything. A threshold of 255 means just about nothing. So let's overdo it first. Let's go in here to amount and pull that up, say like that. Again, I use numbers like this if I'm looking for a special effect. If I start playing around with threshold, let's take it all the way to this side. It kind of goes back to the way it was. Because I'm saying to the computer, there are no actual thresholds between light and dark that I'm going to allow you to use with a mountain radius. But if I begin taking that back, it will slowly start putting it back into some semblance of focus. Now let's get serious about our numbers here. For amounts, like I said, I use numbers like that to play. For something like a portrait, I would be surprised if I got much further than about a 75 or an 80. Now you can drag it or you can type the numbers in. Let's go about 70. For radius, it's typically not a large number. And again, I'm going 2, 3, 4, somewhere around that general area. Let's go to about maybe a 2.5 or somewhere generally in that area. Now we can turn this off and we can turn it on. I'm doing this particular, well, all my lessons actually, on my computer system. They are then compressed, sent to you. So it's possible in the compression process, you might not see what I see. And if I look especially in this area, like around here, and turn that on and off, it actually is sharpening that area of the image. If I change my threshold just a little bit, so it's not doing everything, that will have a tendency to soften areas, or not soften, but not change, areas that are more like, go oh, say in this area in here. We can again turn that on and turn it off. I see his hair looks better. I'm happy with it. I click OK. Now there it is. We can go up to the word filter and do it again if we want to. Just click through it if you want to apply the same thing. If you get it looking pretty good the way you want it, knock your values down by about 50% and apply it twice instead of doing it all at once. It does look better. Now we can always turn this off and turn that back on. Small moves, just those little things that help. Now you may have noticed something else. Of all the features that we've looked at so far under Filter and Sharpen, only one of them had the ability to save a preset that was Smart Sharpen. All the others, like this one, don't. You say, but Andy, I like this, and this is what I like for my images when I'm shooting with my Nikon, with my particular lens on there. And now I have to remember these values. Well, don't forget you can make an action. You can then save the action and then batch process images. So we have a way to get around the fact it doesn't have a preset. And maybe we like Unsharp Mask. I've been using it for years. I really do like it. Smart filter layers, and I think we bring them in almost without thinking because they make sense, help us control this process. And yeah, if you do need to create one of these and use it over again, make it an action. Then save it as a batch process.